Hey guys, I just finished watching Inception for the first time. I had no spoilers beforehand as well, so it was quite a treat. So right off of that, 10 out of 10, one of the greatest movies I've ever watched. Um, I'll probably end up dropping some spoilers by accident in this, so you've got my recommendation right there. It's for the whole family. It's an action epic. You need to watch it. You have to see it. It's absolutely incredible. So, and um, you know, one thing, like I will not be discussing any negatives because I don't think they're worth it. If you wanted to discuss a negative, I think you could rip apart the logic a little bit, but that's no fun, okay? There's no point in doing that, so I'm not gonna be doing that at all. Other movies, I do do that, but not this one. This one was so artistically perfect that I don't see any benefit in doing that. So we don't care about logic. We don't care about suspension of disbelief. Let's just take it for what it is. It is an art form. It is an epic adventure, okay? And for such a crazy idea, it's surprisingly focused. Like, it actually has a, a huge ensemble cast of, like, Christopher Nolan's favorite actors. Uh, the, like, he uses a lot of Batman actors and stuff in here. So he has a very short contact list, I think, because there's a lot of recognizable faces in here. Everyone gives a perfect performance. The dialogue's incredible. The writing is so good. It is quite emotional. It is a very powerful movie. It's got amazing music. The action's great, and I'm glued to the screen. Like, it's pretty long, but I was glued to the screen throughout. I was never bored. At no point during this movie was I like, okay, can you please end now? Um, like, I was, I was loving every second of it. I didn't want it to end. And it's at the very end, um, there's a very ambiguous ending, which is also kind of like a nice wink as well, so I thought that was a cool ending. Because who knows, maybe this entire movie's a dream, right? But, um, yeah, it's crazy. So... Basically, Leonardo DiCaprio, he's playing, he's, he's Cobb, right? Okay, I can't help but just look at him and think Leo, but, so I'll probably just call him Leo. So, Leo is basically a, um, he's like, sort of like Freddy Krueger in the fact that he's like a dream invader and he can, uh, but instead of killing people, he goes after important targets and steals valuable information um, for, you know, competing companies and corporations that want to learn each other's secrets and stuff. So he's like a dream projector, and uh, he has a team as well who's also capable of doing this, and they link up to each other, and they're able to dream. They're able to pick one person to host the dream, and then that person's subconscious runs the dream, but you're able to force the dream's um, environment on the, per on the, the victim. I, I would call him the victim. So you're like able to construct predetermined environments and setups before going into the dream. But the subconscious of the person who's being invaded is still active and will notice you if you're making too much attention. So it's a very cool, it's a very cool concept. And um, here's our first spoiler. So Cobb's wife, he, I don't know if this is her natural ability as well or if he just taught her how to do this, but they end up dream projecting together and they get stuck in a fantasy world for 50 years and he ends up planting a seed um, like, he ends up doing Inception, the name of the title, to his wife, which basically means he plants, a, he plants a small seed idea that will eventually take form and, um, you know, either, they say, either um, define or destroy a person. So in this case, it destroys them. So he plants the idea in his wife's mind that um, she's living in a fake world and the only way to escape it is to kill herself. And he does this, like... He does this with, like, good intentions, but from my perspective, Cobb is definitely the bad guy in this movie, and I love that, okay? I, again, it's a point of view thing. You might disagree. I think Cobb's the bad guy, undoubtedly, and I'll, I'll talk about that more later, but he, he just wants his wife to, like, basically take the red pill and go back to real life, um, and because he's aware, like, he's, he's aware somehow in that, because he's probably because he's more talented with the whole dream projecting skill, so he knows that he's in a fake world, but she's unaware, so... The only way for him to get her back into the real world is to um, plant this seed in her mind. And again, if you did want to rip apart the logistics of the movie, um, you could say, well, who's feeding these people while they're dreaming for 50 years? And also stuff like um, the snow place, why are they, uh, why did she, why did the architect plan such a meticulous military installation for them to go against? Okay, so that's the kind of logic stuff you can, you can pick at if you want, but I don't care about that. Um, but, uh, so, she ends up committing suicide in real life because the seed that he planted in her, that was planted in her dream, 
carried on when she actually came back into real life. And um, she actually goes a step further with the whole insanity thing and um, devises a whole master plan that basically makes Cobb look like he murdered her. And again, while she looks like the villain of this movie, I definitely don't think she is. Um, it was just a bunch of unfortunate, unintentional accidents. So, yeah, but basically she burns all their accounts, sends the kids away, writes a letter basically saying that this man is dangerous and you need to keep him away from me. And my interpretation of that is basically she fears him because maybe somehow she knows that the, he planted the inception before she even found out. That's just personal interpretation. That's probably not what actually happened. Um, but the movie gets you thinking, right? It gets you thinking about stuff like that. In reality, I think she basically, yeah, she just wanted to blackmail him into committing suicide with her. I think it was as simple as that. So he meets this corporate businessman who, again, seems like another antagonist. Everyone who seems like an antagonist in this is a good guy, in my opinion. So this guy's like the most bad of them, in my opinion. But he basically, this is the greedy businessman, Saito, who wants his competitor to give up the business because um, he wants to have like 100% control of the world's energy and become like the next superpower. So he doesn't want to have any competitors. So he wants to go into this guy Fisher, who again is also supposed to be our third antagonist, but he's, he's a good guy. He's not a bad guy. Um, he, they, so they, they plan this crazy idea to have a dream within a dream, 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 to <laughs> basically get get Fisher to help them go into Fisher's own mind and plant Inception in his brain so that he um, dismantles his father's legacy and company so that the guy can be, uh, Saito can be the ultimate ruler. And Saito in return for take, for, so Saito's coming along with them um, and basically if Leo helps Saito do this then, then um, Saito will make a simple phone call that will make all his problems go away and he won't be wanted in the U.S. anymore. You won't have to be a criminal on the run or anything like that. And he'll be able to return back to his children. But who knows if he really did get to end up back with his children at the end. He could just be in the purgatory limbo at the end there. So, yeah, pretty crazy, right? That's how long it took me to explain the plot. And it was actually, for such a, you know, a confusing movie, it was actually surprisingly simple, which I really appreciated. I watched Tenet before this which is very similar to this, obviously. Tenet completely lost me. It was very weird, very confusing. Um, but this one, basically the same premise, like in terms of confusion and creativity, but this was way easier to understand. Like in Tenet, someone would shoot a bullet at a piece of glass, and then if you touch the glass with your finger, you would get damaged. I, just, I didn't understand what was going on half the time. But in this one, it's super simple. You're just, you're just invading people's dreams, and they, may, they do a really good job of explaining the parameters of everything. Well, at least they try to. I obviously don't 100% understand how everything works. But they did a really good job trying to explain it. Like with the whole architects and the chemists and the sedation and the limbo. Like they do, they throw a lot of terms out there that help you kind of understand what's going on. So, yeah. And you've got this added level of complexity because each of these characters have their own little subplot going on for the most part. The architect, she doesn't have too much going on. She's just like a... She's just a gifted student who just finds this dream stuff really cool. Um, you've got Tom Hardy who, he's just trying to make money off the job. You've got the sedation guy who's just trying to make money off the job. So other than those, those three people, the rest of them have like little subplots going on. So let's talk about the three antagonists because that's my favorite part of the movie. The fact that they're not antagonists. The protagonist is the antagonist, or no, the protagonist is the villain to me. So. The reason Cobb is the villain, first of all, before we talk about the antagonist, actually, the reason Cobb is the villain is because he basically caused, you know, even if it wasn't on purpose, he basically caused his wife to go insane and commit suicide and basically screw over the children's lives. And then he turns to a life of crime. Um, and, you know, he's, I think Michael Caine was his dad and he disappoints his dad because he, you know, it seems like he has some positive options he could go for with his dad, but he chooses to go for the life of crime instead. Um, and also he lies to his entire team and doesn't tell him his mental health issues. So, and he doesn't tell them the parameters of the mission exactly. So in reality, if they die in this specific mission, they're going to be stuck in purgatory limbo forever, basically. Like it's, you know, you could argue that's worse than death. 
And as far as they are aware, as soon as they get shot in the head, they just wake up and call it a day. You know, mission failure, we'll get them next time. But if, he doesn't tell them for this mission that basically if you guys die, you're done. You're, you're in limbo forever, there's no getting you back. Um, it seems like he does have a way to get them back, but it, it still seemed to take a very lot of, a lot of effort and a long time. Um, that brings me to the antagonist. So, Saito, the worst of the antagonists because morally worst, I wouldn't actually, he reminds me of like the Squid Game guy, number one in Squid Game. Um, you know, it's at first glance it seems like he's just a corporate greedy guy who just wants to make money. But in reality, he's just an old soul who fears dying alone, and he wants to live one last adventure with really good friends around him, and he wants to feel excited again. Um, so there's a lot of depth to actually a lot of these characters. So Robert Fisher, at first glance, he just appears to be, you know, the target of the plan, just a throwaway villain, right? That's not the case at all. He's actually, you know, he's actually a genuinely good person who just wants the approval of his father and wants his father to love him. It's as simple as that. Uh, it's a lot like, um, Nor, uh, what's that, what is this, Norman, Norman Osborn and Harry Osborn. It's a bit like that. And, um, the last one, um, Mal, Mal, kind of weird name. Um, so Mal, basically Leo's wife, she appears to be antagonist because she's tormented him throughout the film. But that's not actually Maul. That's just, that's just a projection of his guilty, his guilted... Yeah, his guilt. It's a projection of his guilt. And it's basically manifested itself into her form. So she didn't actually do anything wrong. That's simply his own guilt attacking himself. So, yeah. Very cool movie. Action's great. Music's great. Love the cast. Love the actors. Like, sorry, I mean love the acting. It's just a brilliant movie. It's not disposable at all. It's the perfect runtime. I love how long it is. I think it really earns it. There's not a dull moment in this movie. I was super intrigued, super interested. We're going to give it a 10 out of 10. It is one of the best movies I've ever seen for sure. And again, like I said, obviously you could rip apart the logic if you want. And if you're not capable of suspending your disbelief, you might have a hard time with this one. But I can suspend my disbelief, no problem. It's a, it's a, it's a world where people can enter other people's dreams. So obviously, not the, the rules of reality aren't going to apply. So yeah, 10 out of 10, highly recommend Inception. I guarantee you it is going to be one of the greatest movies you've